Okay, so today we're making three of my favorite cozy soup recipes. We've got a creamy, savory one, a super hearty one, and one that's a little spicy. But only one of them can be crowned winter's coziest soup. So stay tuned until the end because I'm gonna be presenting all three of these soups to the most opinionated foodies I know, my family. Would you consider Good. yourself a foodie, mom? Oh yes, <laughs> all Indians are foodies. <laughs> First soup on our agenda is a creamy mushroom soup, kind of like the cream of mushroom soup from your childhood, but like grown up, a little fancy. This is an ounce of dried porcini mushrooms. We're gonna use this to make our own homemade mushroom stock and infuse even more mushroom flavor into the soup. This bowl is definitely not big enough. And I've got one and a half cups of room temperature water. And we're just gonna soak these for 30 minutes, but some of them will float up to the top as you can see. So grab another bowl that you can kind of like submerge them with and set them aside for now. Let's work on our fresh mushrooms now. You need a pound of fresh mushrooms for this recipe. With a lot of my mushroom recipes, whether it's a risotto or a mushroom stroganoff or the soup, I think you're gonna get the best flavor and texture if you use a variety of mushrooms because every mushroom variety has a different flavor and a different texture. First, I've got oyster mushrooms. We also have cremini mushrooms, and then we have shiitake mushrooms, which are really meaty and robust in flavor. For oyster mushrooms, they're gonna have this tough white stem at the bottom. You wanna get rid of that. You're just gonna tear them apart with your fingers. They're quite soft, so it's really nice. It's also very therapeutic. And if you're watching and thinking, you know what, mushrooms are not for me, I'm just gonna go ahead and skip this. I will say that Max, and my partner, hates mushrooms, but he happily enjoys the soup. So, you know, don't knock it until you try it. Isn't that right, Max? Um, yeah. <laughs> Please sound more convincing. Yeah, I, I love mushrooms now. <laughs> For our brown button mushrooms and our shiitake, we're just gonna slice them. We'll just set this glorious pound of mushrooms aside. Get all in there, it's lovely. Okay, we're gonna use a large onion and some garlic. We're just gonna finely chop the onion. Oh, a little strong. Not with these on though. Give me all your onions. Chop them right up. We've got a lot of garlic, eight cloves. I can't help myself. And we'll just finely chop these up. All right, garlic is choppity chopped. Final thing to prep is to make our bouquet garni. That's just a fancy French word for a bundle of herbs. It's my favorite technique for infusing great flavor into soups. You're just gonna take some fresh herbs and tie them into a bundle. We're gonna get two sprigs of thyme, large sprig of rosemary, and two dried bay leaves. You're gonna line up your herbs in a little pile, and then you'll take some kitchen twine like this, and then you're just gonna tie it up like a little cute present. You can also just chop up the herbs and saute them, but this method is obviously quicker. I think we're ready to start cooking the soup. I just need to drain our rehydrated mushrooms and tidy up a little bit. All right, we've got a big soup pot Dutch oven on the stove, medium high heat. I'm gonna add in about a tablespoon of olive oil. I mean, I'm just eyeballing it, but it's a tablespoon. In go our onions, a little pinch of salt. While this cooks, we're gonna do two final things. We're gonna get two tablespoons of butter, butter and mushrooms, fabulous combination. And then we're gonna just roughly chop those rehydrated mushrooms. Let's give these a stir. Our onions have softened, so now we're gonna add in our garlic. And the garlic just needs a minute or two. It smells so good already, and we've only added two ingredients. Now we're gonna add our two tablespoons of vegan butter. Brett just plopped right in there. Look at that, it's so pretty. Shroom time. Rehydrated mushrooms go in as well. It looks like a lot of shrooms, but as you can see, just within a minute, it's already cooking down quite a bit. Let's hit the shrooms with a little bit of salt and pepper to season. Once the shrooms start to soften like this, it's time to add in my favorite stuff, the white wine. We're gonna use a half cup of a dry white wine. I've got Sauvignon Blanc. I don't know if this is a half cup or not. I'm just testing to see if the wine has cooked off yet. If it still smells like wine to you, let it cook for another minute or two. Now it's time to add in our liquid. This is three cups of store-bought vegetable broth. And if you soaked the dried mushrooms, you're gonna end up with some homemade mushroom stock. We're gonna pour that in, but reserve the last tablespoon or so because it can be sediment heavy. Almost forgot our bouquet garni. Just go ahead and tuck it right in there. Let those herbs infuse all the shrooms and the onions and the broth. And now we're just going to bring it up to a boil. We've got a nice boil on the soup. So now we're going to reduce the heat, cover simmered for 15 minutes. Our soup has been simmering. Oh, a little mushroom steam facial. Now we're going to make it creamy without adding any cream. What we're gonna do is scoop out maybe two and a half cups of the soup. We're gonna blend it in here with a few other ingredients. You wanna make sure you get some mushrooms in there, but don't get that bouquet garni in there. Let that hang out in the soup. We're gonna add a half cup of raw cashews. These are gonna make it velvety and just really luscious. As I mentioned earlier, this is gonna be a super savory soup. So I've got two 
very powerful savory ingredients here, tamari or soy sauce. And it's gonna just add that lovely layer of flavor. Need a tablespoon of that. And some white miso. This is a mellow form of miso. A tablespoon of this as well. Now we're just gonna start blending. Let's have a look. She looks creamy. If you don't have a high powered blender like a Vitamix, make sure you soak those cashews first so they blend really well. And look at this creaminess. Just wanna simmer this for another five, maybe 10 minutes so the flavors have a chance to melt together. It's gonna to make it even creamier during that short time too. While this simmers, I'm going to chop up some parsley as our final garnish. I'm just gonna give it a taste to see if it needs any salt and pepper or anything else. I really don't think it needs any salt, maybe just a little pepper. Oh, and let's not forget, we need to remove that bouquet garni. If you taste this and you feel like you want a little brightness, go ahead and add a quarter teaspoon of Dijon mustard. I think this is perfect as is right now, so I'm gonna leave it. And I like to serve this soup in a bowl with a little bit of chopped parsley on top, a drizzle of olive oil for that nice mouthfeel, and of course, some crusty bread on the side for dipping. Wow, this one's gonna be hard to beat. It's so savory, it's creamy like a bisque. It's just got so much flavor. I think you're gonna love it. Next up, we're making a hearty lentil soup. Super simple ingredients, budget friendly, and really comforting. We're gonna start with our aromatics. You wanna finely dice one large yellow onion and mince up six cloves of garlic. We're also gonna add some carrots and potatoes to our soup, make it a little heartier, but both of these are a little dirty, so I'm gonna go wash them first. Potatoes are dirty little things, let's give them a rinse. You wanna dice these carrots so that they cook thoroughly in the soup and kinda of soften and melt into it. I needed a snack. This recipe calls for three medium carrots, but these are chunky boys, as I like to call them. So I might use two and a half of these. Now for our potatoes, the recipe calls for one pound of baby potatoes. These are actually really tiny ones. They're peewee sized. So I feel like I'm just gonna have them instead of quartering them. Ooh, look at that. Purple potato surprise. If your potatoes are on the bigger side, make sure to quarter them because you want them again to be soft and kind of melt into the soup. All right, last prep element are fresh herbs. Kind of similar to last time, we're gonna make a bouquet garni to add that really lovely earthy woodsy depth of flavor. We'll do two rosemary, one nice big sage, and maybe two thyme two timing, and two bay leaves. Get your twine and just give it a double knot so it doesn't come out of the twine. We're gonna get our Dutch oven over medium high heat and we need a little bit of olive oil, maybe two tablespoons. I'm obviously not measuring, just eyeballing it today. Let's get a pinch of salt in there. If you've got a lot of browning on the bottom, add a tiny splash of water so the onions don't burn. Nice golden savory nuggets, beautiful. All right, now we'll add in our carrots and garlic. A little more salt. After a couple minutes, it's time to deglaze. Any little brown bits on the bottom, we can release back into the soup. We're gonna do four cups of low sodium vegetable broth, just so it's not too salty. If you're using a regular non-low sodium vegetable broth, just go easy on the salt later so your soup doesn't end up too salty. Come on, taking your sweet time. All right. We're gonna add our bouquet garni, lots of flavor in here. And of course some lentils. These are French green lentils, a cup and a half. I love French green lentils in salads and soups. If you can't find French green lentils, you can use regular green lentils or brown lentils and our little baby cute potatoes. In they go, lovely. And our tomatoes, we're gonna use a 28 ounce can of whole peeled tomatoes. So this is the fun part. You're just gonna get in there with your hands and smush it. Oh, well, that's the good stuff. It's very satisfying. And any juice or liquid goes in as well. I'm gonna need to wash my hands now. We're gonna season with some salt and pepper and then that's about it for now. Look at this beautiful, colorful soup. Let's get a lid on this so it'll come to a boil quickly. All right, now that the soup is coming to a boil, we're going to reduce the heat to a simmer and partially cover it to simmer for 40 to 50 minutes until the lentils are tender. Let's see what it looks like. Oh, nice. It's looking so good. This is exactly what I would wanna come home to after a long day of shoveling snow, which I will never do because I live in California and I hate snow. But if I were to hypothetically shovel snow, this would be the perfect meal to come home to. We're just gonna fish out our bouquet garni. And because this is a hearty stew, I wanna freshen it up with a couple of ingredients to brighten the flavors. First, half teaspoon of Dijon mustard. And then one of my absolute favorite ingredients, a good quality aged balsamic vinegar. If you can, try to spring for something that is aged for at least a few years and isn't like the watered down sour imitation stuff at the grocery store. And if you want this to be a soupier consistency and less like a stew, you can always add more broth. Mm. 
so cozy, it's rich, it's thick, it smells amazing. And because it is winter, one of the many things I don't like about winter is that it gets dark quickly. So I can't actually finish the third soup today, but we will do that tomorrow. And after that, we will take all three of these soups to my parents' house and see what they all think. Next up, we're gonna make a Thai inspired pumpkin soup. It's got all these amazing Southeast Asian flavors and aromas and aromatics. It's spicy, it's a little creamy. It's just a party for your taste buds. We're gonna start with our pumpkin. This is actually a kabocha squash. I love this recipe with kabocha squash the most, but any pumpkin winter squash is fine. Even butternut squash will work. This is about a three pound squash and we're gonna slice it in half, but it is a little tough. So first we'll pop it in the microwave for two minutes to soften it up. All right, got a nice little warm kombucha. Kombucha, it's a kabocha squash. Kombucha is the beverage. Anywho, we've got our nice warm kabocha squash. We're just going to remove this top stem and we're just gonna use our sharpest, heaviest knife to cut it in half. If it's still too tough, like this feels a little tough, you can pop it in the microwave for one or two more minutes. Take a look at these guns, strong enough to cut any squash. Is this how you do it? I just feel like I'm doing a dance move. Look at these muscles. Everything's fine here, totally normal. Yay! We're just scooping out the seeds with a spoon. If you want, you can save them and roast them later. Oh. Grab a sheet pan, get your squash on here. We're gonna add some flavor directly into the squash while it roasts. We need just a little bit of oil to kind of make sure the squash doesn't stick. A half teaspoon of kosher salt. Some white pepper. It's used often in East and Southeast Asian recipes. It smells amazing and some ground cinnamon. Just mix this together. And I'm gonna pour it like inside of the cavity, inside of here. And then you can grab a pastry brush or just use your fingers to coat the mixture inside. A tiny drizzle of oil on the rims. Spread that out with my fingers or the brush. And we can do some salt on the top too, cause that won't burn. We're gonna put it flat side down on our sheet pan. I'm just gonna prick the skin in a few places with a knife, which will allow the squash to vent and to evenly cook. And now we're gonna pop it in the oven at 400 degrees Fahrenheit for 40 to 45 minutes until it's nice and tender. Okay, while the squash roasts in the oven, we're gonna get started on everything else. We're using some pretty classic Thai aromatics in our soup. We've got shallots, ginger, garlic, and lemongrass. For our shallots, we've got three large ones and we're gonna chop those up. For our garlic, we need six cloves. And by the way, we need some fresh ginger, about two inches. Lemongrass, one of my favorite ever ingredients. It's got this incredible aroma. Oftentimes it'll be sold whole like this. Well stocked grocery store we will sell it pre-trimmed so you can look for that as well. Anyhow, for the long stalks, most of this is inedible. So I'm gonna show you which part to use. You're gonna remove some of these loose papery outer layers that come off immediately. Basically like this whole top part you'll feel is quite tough. You wanna get rid of that too. Also this bottom nub right here, super tough as well. So you wanna get rid of that. Now there's still quite a few papery outer layers here that you don't wanna eat cause they won't soften. All right, we have gotten to the tender core on the inside. Aromatics are ready. Now we need some spices. We want a teaspoon of coriander seeds and a teaspoon of cumin seeds. I'm gonna add them to my spice grinder. If you don't have one, you can use a mortar and pestle. Some ground cinnamon, a quarter teaspoon of ground turmeric, and a teaspoon of that white pepper. We're gonna add some coconut oil to our medium saucepan. Let's add our aromatics. We're gonna cook these over medium high heat for about three, four minutes until they are softened. Smells fantastic. You do wanna stir pretty frequently because the ginger and the lemongrass might stick. It's been about four minutes. Let's add our spices that we mixed earlier. And these just need 30 seconds. We've got all this flavor sticking to the bottom of the pan. So we're gonna deglaze the pan a little bit. We're gonna add in a little bit of coconut milk right now, just a few spoons. We're gonna use that liquid to scrape everything up. Two tablespoons of red curry paste. If you've got baby mouth, you wanna use maybe just one tablespoon so you don't overwhelm your taste buds. That's good for now. We're just gonna add the rest of the coconut milk. Gurgle, gurgle. Now for my favorite special ingredient, like the lemongrass, these are gonna add that very classic Thai flavor. These are fresh lime leaves. If you crush them a little bit with your hands, you release even more aroma and it's just like intoxicatingly citrusy, 
and just so good. So we're gonna add about six fresh lime leaves. We're gonna just crumple them a little bit with our hands or bruise them to release more aroma. A couple more ingredients for our soup. We need some soy sauce for the savory saltiness. I'm using Thai soy sauce because I went to the Thai market. I'm using a tablespoon and a teaspoon of this. If you've ever had a Thai curry, you know it's a little bit sweet too. We're gonna add a tablespoon and a half of coconut sugar. And lastly, our vegetable broth. This is three cups of vegan chicken broth. It's not actually chicken, but any sort of vegetable broth is fine. This has been simmering for 10 minutes. Let's go get our roasted squash now. So I can't quite touch the squash right now because it's pretty hot. I'm gonna show you how to make an optional but delicious topping in the meantime. We're gonna get a frying pan over medium high heat and we're gonna make a peanut chili crunch. Totally optional if you're allergic to peanuts or you don't want something spicy. We love peanuts and we love spicy food in my house, so we're gonna make it. You want a half cup of roasted peanuts. While those are on the stove, we're gonna prep our Fresno peppers. Just dice them up. Peanuts are nice and toasty. Set them aside for now. And now we're gonna add these diced chili peppers. Oh, <laughs> don't stand right on top of the pan. And these need just a minute or a minute and a half. We're gonna add them to this bowl. And then just a couple dashes of soy sauce to bring that saltiness, to bring it all together. Let's give it a taste. Mm, 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 mm. It's spicy, it's definitely spicy. One minute. This is only for spicy food lovers. Now that our squash is cool enough to handle, I'm just gonna show you what it looks like. So you've got this nice brown roasty coating. The peel should come off pretty easily if it's nice and tender. And then it's easy to just plop the whole thing in there. Now the second component of our soup is that soup liquidy mixture we made earlier with the aromatics and the coconut milk. And we're just gonna pour this mixture directly into the blender with the squash. Since it's still warm, I like to leave this off and just cover it with a towel so some steam can escape. Feels nice to me. You can see it's like super velvety. It's got a dreamy texture. But this is also one of those soups that's much better if you let it rest for 15 minutes because the heat will mellow and the flavors will melt together. If you can exercise a little patience, highly recommend waiting. Some Thai basil. This is gonna add that characteristic, slightly sweet, spicy aroma and flavor. If you love, love spicy food, you can add some of that peanut chili crust on top. Mm. This soup is spicy, it's creamy, subtly sweet. It's got so much good aromatic flavor in there. So now it's time for us to head over to my family's house, bring all three soups with me and see which one they like best. For our taste test, I was joined by my sister Pooja, her husband Andy, and of course my parents, Neela and Deepak. I thought this was gonna be a pretty straightforward taste test, but it turned out to be anything but. For one thing, my sister and her husband brought their son, my very adorable nephew, Nico. Also, my dad couldn't resist breaking out his karaoke machine and singing the hits. And by the hits, of course, I mean old Indian songs I've never heard of. His head looks good. You look like you're a jazz right. musician yeah. from Louisiana. Yeah. My most beautiful, talented, intelligent, smart, <laughs> educated, well-placed oh. and well-situated <laughs> daughters with white boys. <laughs> But eventually, I was able to start serving the soups and getting everyone together for the taste test. Pooja, how do you feel about soup? It's not my favorite. It's not your favorite. Do you like soup? Not really, but yours, yes. You've got the perfect taste test. We started with the creamy mushroom soup. Oh yeah, this will be my favorite, I think. How do you feel about mushrooms? Uh -huh. Terrible. How about vegetables in general, Mom? It's a family operation to get some soup in her mouth. I love mushroom. Can I put some spicy food? With no, it? no, not yet. Hot sauce. <laughs> the mushroom is hitting for sure. Follow that up with the hearty lentil soup. It's my mm. favorite. I love it. Let me taste. Oh, okay. <laughs> we have one more soup to try. Mm. There was a brief interruption when my dad decided to turn on the microwave because Nico likes the sound of the microwave beeping. Microwave ding ding. Microwave ding ding. And finally, everyone had a taste of the Thai pumpkin soup. I initially declined to give my sister and her husband the spicy peanut chili crunch shopping because I wasn't sure they could handle it. Yours is um, the not a spicy version. You don't have the topping. Put it on. I'll take the spicy, put it in there. That is oh. better than it's good. Yeah, no. Oh, it is spicy. Andy, you better get the water ready. Andy loves spicy food, but he does not love him back. Ooh. Oh my God. Oh, and it's all red. Uh, it's good. We'll be back after these messages. <laughs> Even my dad, who thinks nothing is spicy enough, thought this soup was pretty spicy. Hot. 
spicy hamburger. Oh, this is even spicy <laughs> for me. Finally, we were ready to tally the votes. The mushroom. The mushroom. Ah. <laughs> the spicy one, Dad. All three. Pumpkin. Yeah. One, number two, number three. Hmm? All three are great, but this is the most nutritious. The right? lentil one is definitely a good hearty meal. Perhaps why I did not win. I like it though. It's a good like meal prepping one. Yeah. This one needs more spices. <laughs> It was a tie. I guess, in the end, the coziest soup is the friends we made along the way. Just kidding. These soups are all good. Give them a try. Please. They're great. I promise. Thanks for joining, and thanks to my family for being in my taste test. Bye! Bye-bye!